Hello and welcome to this uh, video presentation where we will show how to spin a permanent magnet synchronous motor using the motor control software development kit. My name is Rosario Tanasio and I'm an applications manager at ST Microelectronics. So what is the motor control workbench and how does it benefit a designer of motor control applications? The motor control workbench is a GUI that is part of the motor control software development kit or SDK. This also includes the FOC library for permanent magnet synchronous motors. The ST Motor Control Workbench provides an easy way to configure motor control application software and matching hardware setup. The project generated by the tool is compatible with the STM32 CubeMX for further extension or modification. The Motor Control Workbench supports many of the boards of the motor control ecosystem or can also be used with the custom boards. It has a large number of example projects to start with. The user can create a new project, input the motor parameters, set the signal conditioning current circuits for current and voltage sensing and also leverage on an embedded tool for the tuning of the PI controller parameters. This is also an interface that allows to monitor the application once the motor is spinning. The FOC library includes both the sensorless or censored control for speed and position control using all effect sensors or an encoder. The software reduces the design effort and time needed for application setup. Okay, next uh, is uh, an overview of the hardware setup. Uh, we need our laptop with the software that we have just mentioned uh, installed, uh, Motor Control Workbench uh, and uh, uh, STM32 CubeMX. We need a USB cable, we need uh, also a demo board. Uh, for this uh, specific test, uh, we have uh, selected the STSPIN3201, which has uh, the STSPIN32 F0 and uh, six uh, FETs, uh, low voltage uh, FETs, that uh, implement uh, a three phase uh, inverter. The topology is uh, the three shunt one for this specific board. Uh, as you can see, the board uh, is a general purpose one. Uh, it has a lot of test points, uh, a potentiometer to close the speed feedback loop uh, as well as uh, the um, connector for the all effect sensors or uh, the encoder plus uh, uh, three uh, push buttons that can be used to enable or disable the application uh, or reset the microcontroller. The ST-Link is also uh, present on this uh, on this board, uh, so you don't need an external an external one. And uh, uh, we need to supply this board with a power supply that is capable of delivering 12 volt uh, and a minimum current of one amp. The motor that we have uh, used for this demonstration is a BLDC, uh, low power 4.2 watts, uh, but capable of reaching 8,000 RPM. It has uh, four pole pairs. The oscilloscope uh, is also necessary as well as a current probe that we will use down the road for uh, tuning. For the wiring you need to connect your power supply cables to J2, be careful the admissible voltage range is 8 to 45 volts DC. The motor winding faces need to be connected to J3 and uh, the USB cable to J5 uh, on one end and on the other end any of the available USB ports on your laptop. I have placed the current probe on phase V. Uh, the laptop is, uh, as you can see on the right side, running the motor control workbench. Uh, and um, this is uh, the basic uh, the basic setup. The motor is shown here, uh, is a little black cylinder. The board is already supplied as uh, the red LED uh, show. The motor I've used for this demonstration is available on an IM Automation website if you want to buy one for a few bucks and repeat the, the test. It has a rated voltage of 12 volts, a uh, rated speed of 8000 RPM. The peak current is 2.2 amps, rated torque is 0.7 ounces per inch, the line to line resistance is 3.5 ohms, and the line to line inductance is 0.7 milliaries. The back EMF constant is 0.8 volts per kilo RPM and uh, this motor has uh, uh, four pole pairs. Now I want to go over the workflow that needs to be followed for a successful spinning the motor. 
First of all, we need to create a new project with the model control workbench, and then uh, we needed to set up the model control workbench uh, by inputting the model parameters, uh, uh, setting the current sensing and the protection, then working on uh, some uh, drive management settings, such as uh, selecting a proper switching frequency for our application. We needed to set the type of speed sensing, startup parameters, and the serial communication. Once we have done this, we can generate, the compile, and download the code into the stspin 32 f 0 If all of this is done correctly, we can connect the board to the motor control workbench. One thing I want to mention is that if for any reason the motor parameters are not available, you can use the ST motor profiler. This is available for download on our website, or you can proceed with manual characterization and extraction of these parameters. Now that we have uh, talked about the tools, uh, we can proceed with the generation of the code using the motor control workbench. We start from a new project, and uh, uh, we can see from this window that we have the option of selecting either a custom board, um, both for the control and the power, or one of our, uh, for example, nuclear boards, or one of our uh, expansion boards dedicated to motor control applications. The other option is to to select a complete inverter board which features both the control and the power stage. Among the featured board you will find the STSPIN 3201. We select it and we click on OK. The model control main page will now load up and will allow us to change the, and configure the application parameters from uh, the motor one uh, so number of poppers uh, application speed the nominal current uh, voltage uh, value of uh, phase uh, resistance inductance and back emf constant then we can move to the current setting parameters and uh, uh, to the speed sensing uh, where we can select uh, for example between uh, uh, sensor foc or sensorless foc once we are done with this, uh, we can uh, set our protections, uh, bus uh, over voltage or under voltage, temperature uh, protection, uh, as well as uh, over current protection. And then we can move to the firmware drive management block, where we can define the startup parameters for sensorless FOC. Here we have a table with five steps that will allow us to define a current ramp and a speed ramp. From uh, the same block, we can also define some drive settings, such as uh, a PWM switching frequency and uh, the execution rate of our control loop. If all the parameters uh, are, have been set correctly, we can uh, use this blue arrow to generate the code and uh, uh, with one of uh, the recommended uh, uh, application development environments, uh, for example, IR or the STM32 cube ID, we can flash uh, the pro program into the uh, STM32 or into the STSPIN32 F0 in our case. Once this is done, we can open the monitor and connect the board by clicking on the plug icon. Okay, if the board is connected, we can now move to the advanced tab. And from here, we can select the control mode, either speed or torque. If we select the speed mode, we will have to tune the parameters KP and KI for the IQ, ID regulator, and also for the speed regulator. To do this, there is a whole procedure, and uh, we have uh, several tutorials, both on our uh, YouTube channel and on our website, that uh, I invite you to uh, consult. With the motor connected and with the board uh, connected, uh, we can click on the start uh, icon and the motor will uh, start to ramp up the speed. At this point we have reached the end of this uh, short video demonstration. For more information please visit our